Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise and joy, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling blessed in Jesus this morning. Now, we're continuing our study through the book of Ephesians this morning, and we're picking up halfway through the chapter of 6, and we want to begin at verse 10. Now, there are many different directions that we could take in this passage, and there are many different teachings that can come from this passage, but we simply want to read the passage and allow the passage to speak to us in the practicality of living our daily Christian lives. Now, Paul is obviously finalizing this letter unto the church of Ephesus, and so he begins with those all-too-familiar words, Finally, therefore, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Don't be strong in your own power. Don't be strong in your own will. Don't be strong in your own effort. Don't be strong in your own ability, but be strong in the Lord Jesus. Abide in the Lord Jesus. Remain faithful and steadfast in the Lord Jesus and in the power of his might. Let him fight your battles for you. Let him go before you. Let him be your authority. Do you remember what he told us in chapter 3, verse 16? It says that Jesus would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. We draw our strength through and from him. And by doing so, back to verse 11, we will therefore put on the whole armor of God. And this will enable us to stand against the wiles, the schemes, the methods, the tricks, the strategies of our enemy, the devil. For it's not flesh and blood that we wrestle against, but it is principalities. This means dominions and authorities. These would be spiritual dominions, spiritual authorities. We wrestle against powers. We wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this world. They're not warring and battling against the kingdom of heaven. That war has long been fought, and the victory is the kingdom of heavens. But they are battling against this world in which we live, the people of this world. They're fighting for souls. They're fighting for your soul. This is spiritual wickedness that is taking place in the heavenlies. Not too far above our heads, there is a constant battle between the angels of God and the fallen angels of hell, of Satan's dominion for the souls of men. And so in order to prepare yourself for this battle, and in order to withstand the onslaught of the hordes of hell from this battle, within this battle, take the whole armor of God. It will do you no good if you only have a portion of the armor on. You need the complete armor of God in order to stand victorious against the onslaught that is coming against you on a daily basis. And if you take the whole armor of God, you will be able to withstand in the evil day. As with any battle, there are specific times where specific areas are attacked. And when one area is being attacked, another area may be at rest. And so there's going to be a day for you in the battle that will be a day of rest. But then there's going to be that day where the attack hits heavy and hard. That's considered the evil day. And when that day comes, in order for you to stand strong and faithful, undamaged and unharmed, you must have the full armor of God. And when that day comes, don't hurry into battle, but stand. Stand in the Lord Jesus. Allow him to go before you. Now, as this is a spiritual battle, this isn't physical armor that you put on each day. This is spiritual armor. And so you must have the spiritual armor of truth. And what is truth? 
Jesus said in John chapter 17, thy word is truth. And so know the word of God. Be familiar with the word of God, with the promises, with the warnings, with the exhortations, with its doctrines. And be not only hearers of the word of God, but be doers of the word of God. Be practicing what the Bible says. If you do this, you'll be in a right standing with God, which is what righteousness is. And so your breastplate, your spiritual breastplate will be that of a right standing with God because you are faithfully living out his word in your life on a moment by moment basis and prepare yourself with the gospel of peace, not the gospel of war, not the gospel of attack, not the gospel of fighting back, but the gospel of peace. And above all, take the shield of faith, relying upon the God whom you serve. For it is only then you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, all the attacks of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, guard your mind, reprogram your mind, as Romans chapter 12 tells us. Conform your mind to the things of God, the teachings of God, the ways of God, and do not allow your imagination or your fantasies to run wild. Discipline yourself to harness your thoughts. And when you are attacked by the enemy, allow the word of God to be your greatest defense, the promises of God. Those passages where we are reminded, if God be for us, who can be against us? Faithful is he who has called us, will keep us and protect us and shield us. And so as we use the word of God as our defense against the onslaught of the enemy, we are to be constant in fellowship through the spirit with God, our savior, telling him of the battles that we are facing and entreating him to go before us and fight those battles on our behalf. And we are to be constantly on alert. We are watching, therefore, with all persistence, all perseverance, not only for our sakes, but for all the saints' sakes, all the people of God. Because each and every one of us are fighting battles each and every day, and we need the prayers of one another. And so the reminder is here is that as this war rages on, just as hell never rests in its attacks, we are never to rest as the people of God. We are constantly to be alert and aware that we are in a battle. And the moment that we sit down and take a rest, we will be attacked from all sides. So let us remain faithful in our fellowship with God. Let us remain faithful in our reading and our study of the word of God. Let us remain faithful in resisting the devil, not rebuking him, but resisting him as we've been commanded to do. And let us be faithful in remembering that Jesus is our general. Jesus goes before us on our behalf, and he is the one who is fighting the battle. And so let us stand faithful upon the word of God, knowing that he will never leave us, praise God. He will never forsake us. And this is a needed reminder because in a world in which we live, where everyone, even those who consider themselves Christians, are seeking every form of pleasure, are seeking every way to entertain themselves, are seeking every way to pamper themselves, I think if you would look at their lives, you would have to admit, and maybe even for yourself, your life doesn't exhibit that of one who is in a war. Rather, we are living our lives like we're on vacation. But Paul is reminding us that we are at war and we need to ever be reminded and prepared for this war. And that's how Paul ends his letter to this young church in Ephesus. Now, peace in verse 23, be to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and love, uncompromising, unprejudiced, untainted love with feet on that love with faith with obedience unto God in exhibiting your love unto all those around you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ and notice what he says in sincerity 
There are those who say they love the Lord Jesus, but there is no sincerity because you can't see the fruit in their lives. They worship God with their lips, but their hearts are far from him, as Jesus said. And yet Paul ends his letter by simply saying, Grace be unto all those that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Can you say that of yourself today, friends? Do you love Jesus sincerely with a pure heart, with faithful obedience? I trust and pray that you do. Well, I'm so thankful again that you're with us. And I pray that the study through the book of Ephesians has been a blessing to your soul, has enlightened you in ways that you were not aware of when you began this study. And that most of all, the word of God will find its way deep within your soul and will transform you from the inside out so that you will become a more faithful follower of the Lord Jesus by doing so. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.